Are we going to do a quick oil change here? We're doing a 5W30 synthetic oil with a synthetic oil specific filter on a 3.5 V6 EcoBoost. All right, so this is really all you need. Something to catch the oil when you drain it, a funnel, a rag, 15 millimeter wrench, or what well, wrench is the best? And really just an eight millimeter socket. You can use this with a um, power uh, tool or with a uh, ratchet. All right. First thing we gotta do is remove the bottom air cover. And those are eight millimeter uh, bolts. These just come right off. All right, so once you remove the screws, it just comes right off. Just set it aside. All right. The um, reason we have to remove it is because we need to get to this. All right, so we're looking at about a 15 millimeter here to remove to remove the bolt that holds the oil. Uh, make sure you put an, a good oil pan next to it. Line it a little bit to the right because it usually shoots out this way. It'll definitely shoot out this way. So, um, and then always have a couple old rags um, just in case something spills. Loosen it up some. A little bit of oil is dripping already. See where that falls. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens now. Put pressure in. Keep putting pressure in until you feel it kind of skipping a little. All right, it's loose. I'm about to remove the screw now. I thought it was loose. There it is. One thing that helps the oil kind of air out and fall out quicker is opening this up and keeps the air going. And we're going to go ahead and remove the oil filter here to the bottom. If you get into the bottom, you can reach the oil filter right there. We'll see how tight this is. Oh, good. It's nice and it's just a little snug. So, oil filters are typically not tight tight you're just snug enough that you can actually put them on and remove them with uh, your hand as long as you just lose a little force okay so I'm gonna wait for that to keep dripping once that finishes dripping then I'll remove this because this will probably drip a little bit of oil and it usually comes out through here okay so it looks like it's pretty much done dripping so we're gonna go ahead and put the bolt back on there And then you want to snug it up, not too much, don't get crazy with this, it really doesn't need to be that tight, just snug. Good. I'm going to bring this over here, about right there, and remove the oil filter. What the heck? Come on, it's dripping on both sides here. So, <laughs> we'll see if this thing catches it. That drip there. And as you can see in there, it looks like when it's dripping down, It actually drips down right through that square. All right, so you should compare what you're replacing just to make sure it looks the same. You don't want to end up seeing that this one has a huge hole and this one has a small one or backwards. Um, one thing also is you want to put a little bit of oil on the seal here. See, this is a good way to do it. And then just rub it around it. Just enough for it to help latch on. All right. Now we're just gonna put it right where it goes. 
can see. So you can't turn it easy, nice and snug. All right, so I got a couple different types of funnels. You can use either a long neck funnel, stick it in there and start pouring up here, or you can use a small one here, just like that. And this is a good space for a small one, especially with this small container here. Um, if you'd use a big container, then you might want to use a different. Funnel, a little bigger funnel. Now, super important, super important, pay attention here. Before you put any oil in here, make sure that oil filter is tight and make sure the screw, uh, the bolt that in the transmission, in the oil pan, I mean, um, is tight also. Um, you don't want to start pouring oil and then realize afterwards that um, you didn't tighten something up and it's just leaking all over the place. All right, so we're just going to pour it in there just like that. Pour it all the way in. So, we're using six quarts. Depends on the engine size. The 3.5 uses six quarts, but you can also measure it afterwards to make sure you have enough. Look at that. I didn't even spill anything. That's a first. Alright, put the cap back on. All right, so a couple, one more thing to do is uh, put the cover up on the bottom. Put the cover back on, right? All right, so we're gonna put the cover back on. One key thing about this cover is, see this part right here? It goes on top and the rest of it goes on, on bottom. And that's pretty much it. Everything else you should just screw right in. All right, so we just got to empty out this into that right there and take that back to the auto parts store. Then, a couple good things to check whenever you're doing an oil change is check the air filter, make sure the air fil filter's fine. Looks pretty clean, no need to replace still. Uh, I already opened it up and cleaned it on the inside, actually. There was a little, little bug inside, it took it out. This just slides right in here, you can see. Slides right in there, and then clips on each side. All right, you want to check brake fluid. See, the line looks fine there. That's fine. You're really just checking this to make sure nothing's low. So, this is good. This is radiator fluid, is also good. All right, so the last thing you want to do is uh, check. To see where oil levels at, just pull out the O rod, wipe it down, wipe it down here. Easier with two hands, but see we're wiping it down. Slide it back in there. Where the hell is it? There it is. And then take it back out, and oil level should be on or above, in between those two dots right there. All right, so the last thing to do here is to reset the percent oil life right here. Um, right now you can see it's 8%. Now the system, the computer, the truck itself does not know what type of oil you change or how long it lasts or how well it does. Um, but it does do some kind of an algorithm to figure out what type of mileage you use on it. Is it freeway? How, how, how often do you idle? acceleration rates, the just different types of uses of the truck and it estimates the the percent of oil. There's actually been a lot of studies that Ford put into this in order to figure what the algorithm is for that. So it's kind of accurate. Now they do say because there's some variables um, or, you know depending on weather and other conditions um, do you want to change it before it gets to zero. So usually by 15 to 10 percent oil life you want to go ahead and change the oil. Uh, I started the truck, I got the truck at 60,000 miles and I have 60,000, 
Um, so I've put 9,000 miles on it. This is my first oil change, and it still says 8%. The oil that I took out was not that bad. It was still it was dark, but it wasn't like grindy or anything. Okay, so now to reset the actual oil life, it says it right there. Press, hold, OK. That OK right there. I'm going to hold it down. Boom, 100% again. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, that's how you change the oil on the one of these trucks with the 3.5 engine. Pretty simple process. Similar to most trucks, uh, there's actually not very much different on it. Um, it's the fastest, easiest way to do it. I think I spent about $35 on the oil and filter. And it's just doing it yourself and then taking the oil back to get recycled. That's pretty much it. But anyways, check out some of the other videos that I have. Uh, other modifications I've done to the truck, like the wheels, the spacers, the leveling kit, and uh, four scan options. And um, Let me know what you think. Thanks. Please subscribe, like, 